Marshawn, do you feel as you talk about getting older, did that play does that play a role in, in how you see yourself today? Like you're just getting older and also do you see yourself can you almost see the the, the end of the tunnel and, yeah. and preparing for life after after yeah. fighting? Yeah, seeing my mortality in the sport was definitely something I, I thought about more uh, as I turned another year older. You know, because it just felt like I just started fighting the other day. But I started to realize that uh, soon, you know, within the next few years, this will all be over. And then I started to think about what would that final thing be that I, that will make me wish that I, I would have done looking back. And um, to get a belt and be champion was, was one of them. But, but for more than anything, it was just to go out there and have fun competing. And that was something that I was missing for a while. Just have fun doing it. Enjoy it. You know, it, I, ch I chose this as fun. I didn't choose this as punishment, you know. And, and sometimes I would get to the point where I would think, like, you know, I'm like, man, why do I even do this? I'm blessed to do this. You know, this is a gift. I'm, you know, I, I've, I've got God is blessed with this immense, immense gift to be healthy enough to be able to do this and, and to do it at the level that I'm doing it. So I better enjoy it because this is not something that's promised to me tomorrow, you know, and that's one thing that this year has brought me. So quick little nog in the context of fun then. You're not fighting for a title. You're fighting in a fight that, you know, people stack you obviously higher than him in the rankings. So you, people might argue, what does Rashad really have to gain with this victory? Just number 18, I suppose. So how do you, how do you rate that in your own brain and how do you get excited about this fight? You know, I decided to... Uh, not rank fights and in fighters and, and fars on a, on a level of thinking which one is the most important because when it all comes down to it it's all about the body of work that you encompass all together so I look at each fight like it is the title fight this is this is going to be my title fight because without this fight there's no way I can even compete against anybody else on a higher level so um, I know he's going to go in there and try to do what he can to separate me from consciousness or try to rip off one of my limbs or, or, or anything like that. So I got to go out there and do the same to him. And he doesn't care if I fought John Jones or what my record is or what people say. He's going to go in there and try to beat me the same. So all those things, it really doesn't matter. And my focus just has to be on making sure that I make an example of him of what I really can do. How much do you think his boxing is? I think he has really good boxing. He has really good boxing, a Cuban-style boxing, where it's, it's um, really nice with the counter, and they kind of catch you slipping. So he has really good boxing, but I'm too fast. Do you feel with his layoff and your layoff that you both come into an even playing field, so to speak? Yeah, I think so with the layoff. We, we were both coming into an even playing field. And that's another great thing about this fight is that we both, you know, we're, we're both equal in that level, that we both had some time off. And, uh, you know, if, if we have ring rust, we're going to have it together. So we can hold hands through the ring rust. <laughs> you had said that some of the uh, guys at your camp, such as uh, Tyron Spong and Anthony Johnson, had really helped you kind of get a fresh perspective. What was it specifically? Is it more that you had the mentor role with them, kind of feel like the father figure in the Black Zillions camp that helped? Yeah, I would say that. I would say uh, the mentor role. But even like um, you watching, you know, AJ, Anthony Johnson, he's completely transformed into a different fighter altogether since he's left the UFC. And most of it was mentally. You know, he, he's got a great attitude about himself right now. And um, even in the practice room, he's just got a, a, a great positive energy about about the way he, he, he goes in there. And he um, he focuses and he gets it done. And that's kind of rubbed off on me in a, in, a, in a big way. And Tyrone Spong, you know, you're watching, you know, arguably one of the best kickboxers of all time make a transition into a sport, uh, you know, which he doesn't have a base for as far as wrestling is concerned. And... I see the excitement in his eyes when he learns something or when he's trying or when he gets an idea of how he can marry some of his old skills with something that with something that I just showed him. And I love to see that excitement because then it gets me thinking like, you know, gets me excited about fighting and gets me to appreciate the sport in a different way. We're talking about like the joy, the, uh, enjoying like the fights, uh, but if there is any fight that you want to really do and like in the future and enjoy, and enjoy yeah. also. Um, yeah, I, I would like. Uh, I would love to enjoy. I would love. I would enjoy the fight. Uh, you know, I say. I say like, when it's all said and done, I would love to say that I fought the best 
the best fighters of my time. I like to tell my grandkids, you know, your granddad went in there and he fought them all, you know. And, that, and that's, that's something I would love to do. And um, with that said, I would love to be able to say, you know, I fought John Jones. I would love to say that, you know, the person, Anderson Silva, they say he's greatest all time. Well, I fought Anderson, you know, and I beat Anderson, you know. And, and, and that's something I would love to say that I've done, that I accomplished when it's all said and done in my career. So I will enjoy to be able to stand there and compete with the best of my time in my weight class. Speaking of, the, speaking of those people, I was with your old rival Quentin Rampage Jackson the other day. and Shut up, shut up. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm curious what your thoughts are on his departure and just what you feel he's contributed because I know you guys were rivals, but at the same time, yeah. friendly rivals. I'm going to miss Rampage, man. I'm going to miss him a lot, man. He was uh, – he, he was a great talent, you know, and, and the sad part for me with Rampage is I, I feel like he never really realized how how talented he was, you know, and, and that's one thing I wish that he would have realized how, how talented he was. Um, I hope that he, he rediscovers some things for himself and, and find out that he is all fighter and he and this is, he needs to be fighting on the best stage right now, and that's with the UFC, you know, and I hope that him and Dana and the UFC makeup, and he comes back. You know, I, I would love to see him compete again. He's one of my favorite fighters. He's one of the fighters who inspired me to, to start training. So for him um, to come back and, and to really rediscover himself as a fighter that he is and, and really realize the potential, for me, it, it would be great. And how proud are you of Vitor? I feel like, you know, Vitor was always good, but I, I think sometimes he mentally defeated himself before a fight. And so I'm curious what you feel now that he's been with you, he's been doing very well and just seems new again, even though he's been here for so long. Um, I, I feel I'm, I'm so proud of him. I am proud of him because, uh, you know, coming coming into onto the team, people said a lot of things about Vitor and, um, you know, his mindset. And, you know, people say he's a choke artist and stuff like that. But, you know, watching his development, watching him how he's been uh, for the last fight, last few fights with us has has actually shown me a lot you know and i've never seen somebody so composed somebody so mentally focused somebody so hungry after all these years of fighting as vitor and it's it's actually inspired me a lot you know she was talking about one of those people in the gym who's actually inspired me and he's one of those guys who inspired me because he's always positive you know uh he'll never say this but going into both fights with jones and Bisbing, he hurt himself in training, and he he pushed through it. He pushed through it, and you know, it, it showed me that you know, and, and even through it all, not only did he push through it, he was he took it as a challenge. This is a challenge before I actually fight. You know, getting through this injury, getting through this little situation. Now I'm going to be better after all this. For challenges, if you were to go to 185, when did, would you anticipate doing that? Would it be after this fight? You were speaking about if you went, it would be just to fight Silva. Is that right? Um, it, it, would, it would have to be, you know, it would be like oh, a while from now. It would probably be, if I was to make the cut, I would have to do it over a period of time because uh, I'm pretty heavy now. You know, naturally my body gets up to be about 235. But with that said, that's not me eating like super, super clean. You know, um, it would have to be a really big lifestyle change for me as far as just making sure that I get everything in order as far as nutrition and this nutritionist and everything. So it's something that I would do, but it's something I would do with full dedication and let the UFC know that I can definitely make the weight and I would make it a process, like a six month process to do. You've made some statements that you're pretty positive you can beat Silva. What brings yeah, you that confidence? Yeah, yeah. Why am I so confident I can beat Silva? Uh, because um, I feel like my style is a style that he really hasn't faced. You know, I feel like um, he's he's really never faced uh, somebody as athletic as I am and somebody as fast as I am and somebody with the takedown ability as I got married together. Not saying he didn't go against great wrestlers and everything else like before, but I'm talking about that, that package married together. So I felt like he's never faced a fighter like me and I feel like I am the fighter who will give him a lot of troubles. And he, and he, he knows that. He even knows that. Was it a lot that you saw maybe with the Chael fight that you, you were fight. confident? Sure, the Chael fight. The Chael fight, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Chael, Chael I mean, not, not to take Chael lightly and say, oh, just because Chael did it, I can do it. Chael's a hell of a fighter, you know, and, and Chael has 
the one of the best takedowns in the game. And he's very tenacious. So um, there will be a lot of work I need to do to get to, to be like that with the tenacious with my takedowns, stuff like Chael was. But for the most part, I feel like I, I, I can do a great job based off of that fight. Thank you, Rashad. Yeah.